Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, amen. You may be seated. The word of the Lord from which we meditate upon this Easter morning comes from the mouth of the angels. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that it is necessary that the Son of Man be delivered into the hands of evil men, be crucified, and on the third day rise. And the women remembered his words. Here ends our text. In the name of our risen Savior, dear friends. Easter can be a little bit overwhelming. It can be easy to be overwhelmed on Easter when we have the trumpets and the brass and the organ and the choir singing to us God's praises. It can be easy to be overwhelmed at Easter when church is so beautifully decorated. The Easter lilies up front, the flowering cross, white everywhere, reminding us of the resurrection. It can be easy to become overwhelmed at Easter if you have to sit in the back and you have to open up the windows to see. It can be easy to be overwhelmed at Easter as we're gathered together as brothers and sisters in Christ and we hear the victorious text that Jesus is risen. <laughs> Working on that. And it can be easy as we cry out our victorious song Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That was good. <laughs> but today, as we can be overwhelmed with joy and excitement, as St. Luke tells us again the resurrection story, he focuses us in on one thing, remembering. On that very first Easter morning, it must have been overwhelming as well. Talk about a roller coaster of emotion. Just a week ago, Christ rode into Jerusalem and the people cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Just a few days later, all they could cry out was, Crucify him! Crucify him! And they hung him on a cross and he died and it was finished. And now on that very first Easter, those women go to the tomb with sorrowful hearts as they expect to find their Savior lying in a tomb. But the overwhelming emotions continue. The stone is rolled away, the tomb is empty, and there are men dressed like lightning. We come to find out these men are actually angels. And these men, they know what's going on. They know what the women are doing. Why do you seek the living among the dead? The men know what happened. He is not here. He is risen. That was good. I didn't plan for that one, but that was good. But in the midst of that very first Easter, emotion, commotion, and all the like, again, St. Luke draws our attention to one thing. We're told that the women remembered Jesus' words. That's what St. Luke wants us to do this morning. On this Easter, 2016, he wants us to remember Jesus' words. For on that first Easter, when Jesus rose from the dead, in the midst of the fear and the excitement and the wonder and the overwhelming emotion, his people faithfully and simply did one thing, they remembered his words. So that's what we do today. We remember Jesus' words. Not just any words, but his words of promise, his words of life, his words of saving for God's people. And so we remember his perfect life, that he never sinned, not even once. We remember that even in the terror right before his death, he was always faithful never fell away. 
We remember that he died for you. We remember that he rose for you. And as we remember, we don't just remember facts that happened 2,000 years ago and we remember them fondly. No, as we remember, these things change our reality. They enhance the present. They make life richer and full of meaning. As we remember, it changes the now. Memory has that way, doesn't it? It has that effect on us. I see this kind of memoring with grandparents as they hold that first grandchild. You get that new baby girl and you hand her to mom. And at first, grandma's a little nervous. She hasn't done this in a while. She's a little afraid she might break the baby. But then she remembers. And I know how to do this. And she cradles the head. She starts to rock the baby. She makes a funny face at the baby. Maybe kind of tickles her a little bit. And she reaches down and she kisses the baby. And as she looks up and sees you, she remembers. She remembers holding you as a baby. And this memory doesn't take her out of the present. It's not just remembering the days of old. But this memory enhances the now. It changes the present. And it makes Grandma delight with great joy as she holds her granddaughter. For the women of the tomb, as they remember Jesus' words, it enhanced the present. Jesus' words made life today make sense on that very first Easter morning. It made sense of this strange new world that they were encountering. Men dressed like lightning? Oh yeah, they remember Jesus' words. These are angels who are always watching over God's people. God said that his kingdom was going to come, and now his kingdom has come. Well, what about the crucifixion? Was that a mistake? Well, no, they remember Jesus' words. That Jesus said it was necessary that he suffer. This is God's will. God's will that his son would bear our punishment. And now that punishment is finished. And what about the empty tomb? They remember Jesus' words, how he said he would rise from the dead. This is a glimpse of heavenly joy. And just as Christ is raised, we too who have faith in him will rise to new life. Remembering Jesus' words enhances the present. It makes life today worth living. And that's what it does for those women at the tomb. It makes life worth living. And so they go, they depart from the tomb, and they run away, living in Christ's grace and mercy. Today the church remembers. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection because this event makes our life richer and full of meaning. It enhances the present. It allows us to make sense out of the things that we see. For like the women at the tomb, it can be very easy to become overwhelmed at Easter. Being overwhelmed not just with trumpets and Easter lilies, but being overwhelmed as we encounter this world. Being overwhelmed with sin. Knowing that we've all fallen short of God's grace and mercy. Knowing that sin continues to linger on. Whether it's anger at a boss or gossip with a co-worker, whether it's terminating an unwanted pregnancy, whether it's a broken marriage, or a broken family, or even a broken relationship with God. Sin is overwhelming. It bears down on God's people, and it appears as though the past affects our present, and it will continue to affect even our very future. It can be overwhelming as we deal in a world of sin. But it can be overwhelming not just with sin, but like the women of the tomb as we encounter death. We come with sorrowful hearts, wanting death to end. And there's overwhelming sin, and there's overwhelming death, and there's overwhelming being in a broken world. 
where it appears that evil always wins and good never succeeds. It can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming indeed. But God comes to us this Easter morning. God comes and says to you, Remember. Remember my son Jesus. Remember my son Jesus. He gave his life for you. He forgives you all of your sins. They're wiped clean. He is the author of life. And he promises to give life to all of those who believe in him. In him, you are part of my kingdom. With him, you are now a member of my family, a child of God and now an heir to eternal life. As we remember, it enhances our present. It makes today richer and full of meaning. When God makes his love known for us in Jesus, no longer do our former sins affect our present. No longer can death affect those who we love. No longer does evil reign. But now it is the Lamb who reigns, and now He continues to reign forever and ever. Alleluia. Jesus lives, and we continue to trust His words as He promises life to all of God's people. Today, as Luke tells us again the resurrection story, he calls you to remember. To remember Jesus' uh, crucifixion and his resurrection. In him you are forgiven, and with him he grants to you life forever. Yes, it can be overwhelming at Easter, but that's because God's love is overwhelming. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.